Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. My name is Dr. Leslie Phillips, and I am going to be your host for the next hour. And it's great to be back. We're back. Hooray! We've been away for the last month. We were uh, traveling in Europe. And if you're a regular listener, you hopefully you tuned in to those shows that we sent you from Hamburg and from The Hague in the Netherlands and from England. The home of the Beatles, Liverpool. That's right. That's where we were. We were near Liverpool, enjoying the European rain instead of the Canadian rain. <laughs> <laughs> and sure did it rain. <laughs> it did. It pretty much rained the whole time. And and think about the rain in England and in Holland. It doesn't fall straight down. It falls sort of sideways. The massive wind just like. Yeah, the wind cuts right through you. Ooh. <sighs> Anyway, we've been so busy since we got back. I don't think I have stopped for a moment over the last week, really. And I was just thinking on the way here, what shall we do the show about? And I decided we would do the show about stillness. <laughs> because, I, because I could really use some stillness myself. Having been running around uh, since I got back, catching up with everything. And so I thought we'd do um, stillness. So this is a time of year, isn't it, where things go crazy, where everybody gets busy. You've got to think about um, what you're doing for Christmas and you've got to think about what, what presents you're going to buy for people. And maybe you're running around at work trying to get things done before the holidays. It can be it can be a busy time for people. What what happened to peace on earth, goodwill to men? <laughs> I know. Well, I think we need to we need to revisit that. We need to see if we can get a little bit of that on tonight's show. Stillness. So, how do you? Corey, when you your mind is going crazy and it won't stop, or your emotions are running riot, what do you do to get a little stillness back in your life? I know what I do, and I'm going to share that with everyone in a minute, but I'm just curious. I don't know. It just it all depends on, on where I am, wh where I am at as well. I like to, as you know, watch movies. <laughs> I like to, to turn my mind off and or get into something else. And I used to meditate as well a lot more, but I can turn off. I can actually turn off while doing things. Um, like I love to work with my hands. And when I'm working with my hands, my mind, I can turn my mind off that portion of it. And it's like a, it's like a vacation from reality. Essence. Well, you know, and you make a really good point there, because I think what's happening to you when you're working with your hands is that you are entering the present moment. You actually are entering the stillness, because besides meditation, some of the ways that you can enter the stillness is by doing art. I always think artists, when they do, when, you know, I don't know whether you've ever played around with painting or drawing, but I know when I do it myself, that focus on um, the pen or the paintbrush on the page, just focusing on what you're doing, it really draws you in. And all that exists for the time that you're doing it is that creativity, that creative flow. It brings you into the stillness. For some people, going for a walk in nature, you know, escaping the, the city and the roads and the traffic and just going for a walk in nature. And you know what? There's a saying, isn't there, that a change is as good as a rest. And I think there is something 
for be said for what you said about, um, you know, you like to watch a movie because um, basically what you're doing is you're tuning out whatever um, projected reality that you're needing to take a break from by focusing on what's going on in the film. Yeah, and I, again, I don't recommend it to people necessarily go see a movie if you're if you need to get away from from, you know, if you want to be still. It's just my it's the way I do it and I find it very interesting because especially I wouldn't watch television. Uh, watching TV in itself with the commercials, you're just becoming um susceptible to what comes on the on the on most people become susceptible. But I enjoy getting into a program and what happens is is my mind that it, it just goes goes somewhere else and relaxes it, it, it's it and it's funny like I, if you ask me what was your movie about it takes it takes a little for me to think about it because i'm not there for the knowledge or the i'm there to be to be entertained to have my mind babysat for a little while if you want to call it that just to get out out of it but i don't absorb it it just mm -hmm. it just flows off yeah so i mean of course i like i do like to meditate and i find that that really helps me and i'll share with you listeners this evening um, a couple of techniques one in particular that will really really help when your life is, well, they'll both help you when your life is really busy and overwhelming. And especially if your head is just full of, full of stuff. So, of course, you, if you listened before, you know I talk about grounding a lot. <laughs> but the other technique that I'm going to talk about tonight is one called centering. But in order to introduce you to, to centering, I'm also going to introduce you or reintroduce you to grounding. And I feel like doing a little meditation myself just to just to calm down and relax and get into that place of present time. And so let's all just do this together. And you can you I mean, you might want to be careful if you're driving. Um, <laughs> I, I can do it while I'm driving, but <laughs> it was the first time. Maybe not, not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, just. Uh, Everyone close your eyes unless you're driving and, and tune in to an energy center that exists near the base of your spine and just start to create a flow of energy that goes from there all the way to the center of the earth. You can imagine a waterfall just flowing from near the base of your spine, flowing through all the layers of physical matter till it reaches the center of the earth and you can let all of your stress all of your troubles all of your pain anxiety whatever it is that you would like to let go of you can just allow it to flow down that grounding to the center of the earth and breathe deeply in and out because actually breathing helps bring you into the present moment because that's where your body is. And grounding helps bring you into the present moment because it helps bring you, the spiritual entity, into connection with your physical body. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you how to center. I'm going to invite you to place your conscious awareness in the center of your head. And the way that we're going to do this is just, for now, focus your conscious awareness a few inches above the top of your head. Hang out above the top of your head. Well, how is this possible? <laughs> it's possible because you are not your body. You are spirit. You are a spark of divine consciousness. Your body is your vehicle to travel around in. So, start to move towards your body. And for a moment, just for a moment, pause on the top of your head. This is a great place to just sit and be. 
just be, just to be still. And know yourself as spirit. So the top of your head is the the gateway to your infinite spiritual wisdom. And it's a place where you can sit and access anything that you want to know. It's also the gateway through which you enter your body. And so right now, move from the top of your head down through the crown and place your conscious awareness in the very center of your head. Be in the center of your head. Now, if you know biology, a hint, this is your pineal gland. If you don't know biology and you're having trouble finding the center of your head, then just take your two index fingers, place one in the center of your forehead, place the other at the side of your head, slightly behind and above one of your ears, and then imagine that there's a line of light that emanates from the end of each of your fingertips. There's a point inside your head where those two lines of light intersect. That is the center of your head. So just experience that, being grounded and being centered. Now notice if the center of your head is calm and still or if it's busy. And if it's busy, give it a healing by releasing that busyness down your grounding. So do that now. Give the center of your head a healing by releasing energy from there to the center of the earth. This is one of the seats of consciousness, one of the seats of the soul. If you place your consciousness here, it can give you great clarity because it will help you to access your spiritual sight. It also puts you in a place where you can be completely neutral and non-judgmental about what you see. So that's a great benefit. That's a really great benefit to be able to be neutral, the neutral observer of reality, without judging, without criticizing, without feeling judged. Just to be, to simply be present in your body in stillness. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit why this is such a powerful technique. So I want to invite everybody to move forward into the frontal lobes of their brain. Move to the place where you do your thinking, your logical thinking. For most people, it's in the frontal lobes of the brain, the front of your forehead. And let's do some simple maths. Add nine plus six and divide by three. It's kind of easy, isn't it, when you're in the frontal lobes of your brain? Now move your conscious awareness back into the center of your head and release energy down your grounding. So you've pulled your consciousness back. You're back on your pineal gland. You're back in that area where those two lines of light intersect. And now add 4 plus 8 plus 16 and divide it by 4. And notice if there was a difference when you did that calculation from the center of your head versus the frontal lobes of your brain. And I'm going to just show you one more thing and then we'll use Corey as a guinea pig and see what he noticed. <laughs> so now, actually, I might show you two more things. Float back above the top of your head. So just go back up, out through the crown and float above the top of your head. And let's do some maths from here. Multiply 7 by 4 by 2 and divide by 4. And notice the difference between the two places, the three places now that you've been. And then come on back in through the top of the head 
Move back into the center of the head and release energy down your grounding. So we'll pause for a moment. If we've got time, I'll show you something else that centering does. But let's just see what Corey has to say about what he experienced. Well, actually, that was, that was kind of that was, that was very interesting because uh, when you know me in numbers, I'm great with numbers. And, and the, the first, you know, the first uh, doing it from the frontal lobe, no issues whatsoever. Just <laughs> uh, from the center of my head, um, <laughs> You, you rattled off numbers, and I lost you at four. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I really didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's exactly. Just, so what? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't an issue. Like I got to do it. Like you know me, yeah. I got to do it. I got to do a, a puzzle. And and then from the when I was at the outside on the top of my head uh, above my crown chakra, um, it was a little different. It it, it I I also lost um, uh, lost the numbers. But it was sort of like I almost didn't hear them, didn't catch them at all. It was very similar, but just a slight difference. And yeah. again, no interest. It yeah. was just no interest, but it was just a little different. Yeah. So, um, so when you were outside of your body, you were disembodied. You weren't as connected with this reality. So, of course, you didn't really care that much about it. Now, when you were in your frontal lobes... You were using your brain, your analytical brain, your logical mind, the part of you that does the thinking. It belongs to the body. Well, it's, it's like a computer. It did the math easily. When you sit in the center of your head, it's like a gateway to, 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 sp to spiritual reality. You're sitting in the center of your sixth chakra. You're, 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 you're in a place of pure clarity and, and spiritual vision, neutrality and non-judgment and it, it, it's a place, by sitting in the center of your head, it moves you apart from your intellect. It separates you from your intellect. So when your intellect is going crazy, weighing up the pros and cons and worrying about things, move into the center of your head and you will have relief from that. Yeah, it, it was interesting, actually, because like, I lost you at four and then I sort of going, oh, well, maybe it's eight. I'll guess. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't have to guess. It's not important. <laughs> it's kind of, that, that's it's brilliant. It's kind, kind of weird, you know? Yeah. That, 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 and that. Sort of go, almost going into my intuitive state as well at the same time. Right. Well, that's what it, it will start to activate your, um, your clairvoyance as well. So that's fantastic. So um, maybe we'll do a slightly early break and when we come back we'll do another experiment on Corey with uh, centering <laughs> okay so bear with us we'll be back after this <laughs> Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And this evening, we're entering the stillness. We're finding a way through meditation to find a place that is peaceful, that is apart from the intellect and above the emotions. And before the break, we were doing a little experiment, and uh, Corey was our guinea pig. But I hope you all joined in, all the listeners as well, and, and also noticed the great benefit of doing this technique called centering. Now, while we're waiting, we're going to do some, some more meditation and... So I want to demonstrate some another benefit to centering. So I'll just invite you all again to, as long as you're not driving, close your eyes and just check in with that energy center near the base of your spine and create a flow of energy that goes from there all the way to the center of the earth. And then as we did before the break, Place your conscious awareness in the center of your head. And from the center of your head, 
be aware of what your main emotion is. What's, your ma- what's the main emotion in your physical body right now? And experience the emotion from the center of your head. Then, just start to move your consciousness down until it comes to rest two finger widths below your belly button. So sit in your belly and experience your main emotion from there. And contrast what it felt like to experience your emotion from the center of your head to experience it from your belly. And then move your consciousness back up, back into the center of your head and release energy down your grounding. And we'll we'll just see uh, what our... Guinea Pig Studio, Studio Guinea Pig, Guinea Pig Studio. <laughs> um, what our Guinea Pig Corey? So, so, uh, what was your experience of doing that? Mm, oh, definitely. That uh, just that they're actually almost opposites. Uh, when I was in in the center of my head, I was at peace. It was a peaceful feeling, um, sort of like a. Just relaxation, peaceful feeling. When I moved down to the other area, it was anxiety. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad I'm passing all the tests here. Yeah. No. Well, and and exactly. So the other thing that centering does is it brings you above your emotions. So. That place, two finger widths below your belly, is your emotional center. That's where your emotions emanate from. And so when I had you sit there, you were sitting in your emotions, swimming in them, surrounded by them. And then when you pulled your consciousness back up to the center of your head, you were above your emotions. You were a neutral observer of your emotions. Actually, I was going to say there was like a nothingness there, but I guess peace is the same for me. Peace and nothingness are equated. Yeah. So, so there you are, listeners. There's two techniques that can help you to enter the stillness, that can instantly take you out of a busy mind or a strong emotion that's pulling you into it. And put you in a place of peace and neutrality. Now, the. And no curries were hurt during this experiment. (laughs) The other thing that will um, cause your body to um, go into a panic, and it's a typical thing at this time of year as well, is if you project yourself into the future. (laughs) <laughs> you know, oh, what about, you know, I've got to go and buy the turkey, you've got to do this, or what about this, that, and the other, and you're constantly in the future because you're planning for the future and you're moving into the future. Well, your physical body, you, the spiritual being, you can move into the future and back, but your body, it can only be in present time. It can only be right here, right now. It can't move into the future. So when you move into the future, it freaks the body out. Because it can't go there. It's not there yet. That's frightening to it. And, of course, the other thing, maybe not... Actually, it's very relevant to this time of year because we hear hear stories, you know, a lot of people um, lose loved ones at Christmas, you know, get divorced at Christmas. And so um, there can be a tendency to think about in the past when you were with your family when you are with your loved ones that aren't with you anymore. And of course, the body can't go into the past either. You, the spiritual being, can go into the past, but the body can't. And what does the body do in response to that? It gets depressed. It gets depressed. And so it's another reason for really focusing your conscious awareness into the present moment. Because in the present moment... It's the place where you can be at peace and where your body can be at peace. You know, <clears throat> two things came to me when we, when we were talking about that, Dr. Leslie. The first one 
was um, a lot of people when I taught that to them, they asked the question, yeah, but does that mean I can't plan anything? What do you say to that? There's a difference between um, you can plan you can plan from the present moment. So there's a difference between projecting your consciousness into the future and being in the present moment and laying a plan for the future. That's what I would say. In other words, you don't have to worry about where you're getting the turkey and the, the yams and everything, but you can plan the menu. Sure. Yeah. So there's a yeah. difference. No, no, that's exactly what I touch. I was taught, and I brought this up on uh, on an earlier show a few months back. If you really want to see what a true example of living in the present, most of us when we eat, when we have dinner or have some chips or whatever, uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll be be well we'll have dinner but we're we're thinking about what are we going to do after dinner we're, what are we going to be doing afterwards and if you notice how you eat most people and i'd say almost everybody will have a fork in their hand they'll take a bite of food and while they're chewing that bite they will pick up another bite of food for, on the fork getting ready for when that bite is done when that bite in your mouth is done and there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's I'm I'm not calling anybody you know slovenly in any way, shape, or form. But if you truly want to do an experiment, take that bite of food and don't be thinking about anything other than sitting there. Don't think about getting up to do the dishes or you you got to go to a movie or you're going to be late for something. Just take that bite of food, put your fork down, and just chew that food and concentrate on the chewing of the food. You will be totally freaked out. Uh, what happens, you will actually taste the food you are eating in a way that you've never tasted it before. That's right. And it's called, it's, that's an exercise in mindfulness. And you're quite right. You can use the, the senses to bring you into the present moment because the senses like taste and smell and sound and all of those things, they belong to the body. So any time you focus on them and the breathing, it brings you into the present moment. It connects you with your body. So the more present you become, the more you're able to taste the food, the more connected you are with your body. And, and that holds true for anything you do. I mean, even if you're doing the dishes, do the dishes. Be there. Do the dishes. Don't do, I have to get the dishes done so I don't watch the hockey game. No, just do the dishes and you will have an enjoyment of doing the dishes it'll be a a different experience so enter the zone of present time all right so we are taking your calls now you can phone and share your tips for achieving peace or you can phone and ask a question so for anyone who's listening for the first time I'm a professional intuitive and I, you know, it's my life work to help people. So you can phone up with a question about anything, you know, whether you're going through some problems in your life and you're struggling with something or whether you're just curious about spirituality or intuition, phone up with a question and we'll be happy to answer that for you. And we take questions by email too. So you can email info at drlesliephillips.com and I'll just spell that, D-R-L-E-S-L-E-Y-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S. And I think we have quite a few email questions because we've been away for a few weeks and they've built up a little bit. So yeah, They have, and, and um, I've got a couple here from the workshop we did last week, uh, Dr. Leslie, your, your Wednesday evening workshop. And um, there's no name with this one, but uh, there's, a, there's a couple of interesting questions that came out of that workshop. And the first one is how to trust your inner guide slash voice slash I can't make out the last word. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give it to me, see if I can read it. <laughs> yes, I can't make it out. It looks like arrow, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 OK, so how, how to trust your inner voice. So your inner voice is that voice inside of you that sounds like you. And it's actually your higher self, you the spiritual being, talking to you 
the temporal self, the body personality. So how do you trust your inner voice? How do you trust your inner voice? Well, I'd say that it actually it relates to what we've been talking about right at the beginning of the show. The biggest block that most people have to trusting their inner voice and to trusting their other intuition is is the intellect. And and so by centering and grounding you bypass the intellect and you open to the more subtle spiritual signals right so by grounding and centering you can learn to listen to your inner voice and not be tempted to go into your emotions or your intellect most people on this planet operate entirely from their emotions and or their intellect and those are and their sex drive and those are all those three things belong to the body they don't belong to you the spiritual being spirit has none of those things and so by grounding and centering you put spirit in charge and you tune out those we're not ignoring them but we're um you know we're learning how to be present as spirit in the physical system and consciously operate as spirit and be in charge and listen to the intuition. Now, Corey has passed me this um, thing and he's circled the word guide. Yeah, uh, not just the knowing your inner voice, but also your guide. How do you, how do you know or trust your guide is her question as well. Yeah, she called it an inner guide, though, which is um, an interesting term. So, um, so I've answered it for inner voice. I'll answer it for because there's a difference between inner guidance and a guide, which is an external entity and not the same as you. So, le- so I guess let's answer the question from the perspective of how do you trust your guide, meaning um, another being that's working with you and assisting you, but is not you. So a a guide that is a beneficial guide will respect your space. And what I mean by that is they won't interfere with your life uninvited. So number one, if some if, if, if an entity is coming and messing around in your life and you've not asked it to, then I wouldn't trust that guide. And, um, you know, so number one, and the other thing is, if if the guide is invading your space, and so I was talking to somebody about this this week, actually, and I gave an example from my own life years and years and years ago over 20 years ago, when I was first um, taking classes in healing in England. And they were teaching us how to work with guides. And I had great success when um, the guide that I was working with used to walk into, into my body and move my arms for me. And everybody thought that was great. That was very successful. Well, 20 years later on, that's not something I would advocate. I would say that that guide invaded my space. That guide invaded my space. The way I work with a guide now is I never invite that guide to walk into my body. Um, the you know the guide um, I work with the guide in a, in another in a, in another way, where the guide respects my space, and so um, that's the biggest one. And the other thing is there are techniques that you can use where. If you're aw- if you have some awareness of the being, whether you can see it or feel it or hear it, you can ask it if it is in alignment with the light, if it's in alignment with your greatest and highest good, and keep asking it. And if that being is, it won't falter. If that being is not, then um, it will it will not be able to stay. Um, it will not be able to maintain its presence. So that's the answer to that question, Corey. Okay, thank you. For all of those of you who are listening and agree, raise your hand. We want to count you. 
<laughs> Let's do one more question and then we'll go to a break. Okay, I have a question from Sonia, who is uh, one of your students. And Sonia wants to know, or she wrote you an email saying, you mentioned that I have blockages in my fifth chakra, particularly my hearing. You hit the nail on that one as I have issues of speaking, standing up for myself. I'm wondering if you can pull a portico card for the following question. How do I clear such blockages? Okay. So she's referring to this thing I do on my website called a free card reading. Um, so we, we were not, we're not going to do that, but we, we will take a look at her question. Okay, so let's see. The question was, how does she clear the block in her fifth chakra? Because mm -hmm. she's having trouble um, speaking, and I told her that she was a block to her clairaudience. Okay, well, let's take a look. Well, I, you know what? In strange synchronicity, this also, the answer to this also goes along with the theme of the show because what I'm seeing is that the energy in your fifth chakra is out of present time. And so one of the things that you can do to assist it is to, is to practice being present, being in present time and releasing energy down your grounding that you're carrying around with you that is not in present time. So bringing your fifth chakra into present time, I'm seeing is um, a big part of it because I'm seeing that that fear of speaking comes from past time experiences uh, when you were little, uh, when you've spoken up and been invalidated or been made fun of or felt embarrassed or ashamed of yourself. And you just carried that energy around like I, it's best not to speak up because these are the kinds of things that happen when you do. So, um, yeah, bring that into present time and release it because you're not there anymore. You're an adult. You know, you're a, you're a grown woman and you do have things to say. So, and then I'll just check in and see if there's anything to say about the, the Claire audience that's different than that. Well, I'm seeing that actually there, I mean, there is a guide that is wanting to communicate with you through that channel and you are kind of resisting the communication out of fear, out of fear and, um, Again, it, it, it looks like it's connected with the other thing because, um, you know, it may be that when you were little, you um, were more connected with your guides and you spoke about them. And everybody said, well, that's her imagination and that's not real or even laughed again. And so it's sort of like, well, it's best not to hear them either. All right. So I hope that helps, Sonia. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. So we've been having a a show dedicated to stillness and inner peace and the power of now, the power of being in present time. So join us right here, right now on Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie for the next exciting question. <laughs> that's my cue, right? Yeah, that's your cue. Okay. Um, this one is a very interesting one. I think a lot of people have this issue around this time. And it is from Anne. And I and writes, I have a high, I have high exact let me try this over again. I have high anxiety, insomnia, pain, and always tired. Could you guide me on feeling better? And feeling better is in capitals. So anxiety. Insomnia. Insomnia. 
pain yeah and always tired i wonder if the always tired and insomnia have something to do with each other well yeah you know and i had someone i actually had somebody different today i was doing a, a session with somebody and they asked a very similar question and with that lady it was seasonal affective disorder her body was wanting to operate within the natural rhythms of nature and wake up when the light came up and go to sleep when the light went down. She'd said to me, why do I always get tired at around four o'clock? Well, that's when it starts getting dark. So let's see. It was this lady called Anne, you said, I think. Yes. Okay, well, let's see if it's the same thing for Anne or whether it's something different. Anxiety, insomnia, pain and tired. Hmm. Well, it might take me a moment or two to see what's going on here to unravel this for you, Anne. So give me a moment, folks. It's always an awkward silence, isn't there sometimes? But bear with me. I'm just tuning into Anne's energy and taking a look. So, I would definitely suggest listening to the instruction that we gave at the beginning of the show about grounding and about centering, because I am seeing that you're not very grounded, and um, and so it's almost like when you experience some pain. There's nowhere for it to go. It's sort of just sticking inside and building up. But if you could learn to ground, then you have a conduit for releasing the pain as it comes up and also for releasing the pastime pain that you have stored in your uh, your body. So that's the first thing that I would say. And I think I'm going to give you a little healing, Anne, while I look at you, because sometimes I just need to move the energy a little bit in order to be able to see what's going on clearly. Because I, the other thing, I just felt that you were disconnected from your body, that the body-spirit communication, that connection with you and your body just wasn't really there. And, of course, your body will be frightened um, because it's, it's like it, it feels abandoned. You know, you leave the body to cope on its own. The body gets frightened. I was talking about that earlier. You go off into the future and leave it. It gets scared. And so um, I'm seeing that that that's also is is part of it. Now, the grounding will help you to connect with your body and we were taught somebody else asked earlier about the inner voice that's the way that you can speak to your body so i would also advocate um talking to your body sound a bit silly talking to yourself but i'm seeing it would help just to have a conversation with your body and soothe it and calm it down And then obviously the insomnia and being tired. Well, if you can't sleep, you're going to be tired. But let's look at what's keeping you awake. And the body is just so afraid. It's just so afraid. It's afraid to go asleep. Um, It's afraid of disturbance. And it looks like, it looks like, it does look like you are having some difficult or scary experiences on the astral plane when you go asleep. It looks like you're sort of um, trying to work out and work your way through some of the pain that you've stored in your body in the waking state on the astral plane. Um, and then you're bringing some of that back into the body and it's just, it, the body's just, the body's afraid. So... Grounding, centering, talking to your body, I would start with that. So I hope that helps. We've got time for one or two more. Okay, I have a question from Mandy. And Mandy writes, I have recently learned that my mother was has carried a very big and painful secret all of her adult life. I was told by spirit in the context of, 
of that I would help her somehow, yet it would be too painful if I initiated a conversation. As it is not for me to bring this secret out in the light, what suggestions may you have to ways I can help my mom? Does my dad know? With gratitude, Mandy. Okay, so how you can help your mom. Well, I think the best thing for you to do is just let go of any responsibility for this because it's not it's not your responsibility. Um, it really isn't. It's to do with your mom. So um, I would just say, and I'll take a look at it. Well, you've heard the saying that, you you know, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And that really applies to healing. All healing is, is self-healing. You, you know, your your mom has to be ready and and want to delve into this and want to bring it out into the open. And, you know, you might have a concept that it would be good for her to do that, but that's your concept. It's really up to her. I'm going to leave that one there, Corey. Okay. Does that mean you want another one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is this is a question by Cloud. Cloud wants to know, are there any limiting beliefs, past traumas, habits, or blockages keeping me from connecting with or receiving messages from my guides, angels, ancestors, or spirit? Wow. Yeah. That's wow. a multi-layered question. Very similar to the question we had before. Yeah. Though. Okay. So let's look at Cloud. Wanting to connect with her guides and spiritual information. I assume it's a her. Could be a he, I suppose. Well, the first thing, Cloud, and it's funny because your name is Cloud. <laughs> Uh, is that I, I I'm see again I'm seeing you not be grounded, um, and I and I'm seeing that you've got these um, concepts about guides and spiritual information that is in a way not grounded in reality, um, you know. And then sometimes we pick up these concepts of you know oh these ethereal special beings that are f- you know fonts of great wisdom and whatever. Um, you know, and we forget that we are we are divine beings. You know, we're as connected to the whole and as connected to God and as connected to spiritual information, or we can be, as our guides. And so, I'm just seeing that. Um, again, just getting grounded and letting go of other people's information. You know, sometimes people go to a lot of workshops and listen to other people's ideas about things and absorb them and take it all in and, and kind of get programmed into other people's beliefs. And, and I'm seeing that that's a little bit of what's happened with you. And so I just, just you know, like get down to brass tacks, get down to what's your information, what you believe, not what someone else has told you. Um You know, cultivate your own direct experience. And the way to do that is through meditation. So grounding, um, releasing foreign energy, bringing your energy into present time to help you let go of that past time energy. And, you know, centering and having your own direct connection with spirit. Um, Letting go of expectations of what it is like to communicate with a guide or an angel um, so that you can have your own direct experience of what it is like for you. So I'll see if there's anything else we can tell you here. I mean, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I mean, we could delve into some of what the specifics, but um, no, that's really is what it is. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at drleslieyphillips.com. That's drleslieyphillips.com. 
where you can ask questions or send her an email. And there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again.